Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto, and what I'm about to show you may upset you. I'm sorry. But we thought, well, we have to show you. So, we play it. You ponder it. First, let's watch it. Wizamachang you can change the future. You have to. Join citizens against government waste to stop the spending that is bankrupting America. Now to the guy behind that ad, an ad that criticizes spending on both sides of the aisle. Tom Schatz, president of the nonpartisan, the group Citizens Against Government Waste. One word, Tom, wow. Wow. What's your reaction? Where's this ad going to be? Well, that's the purpose of the ad, Neil, is to make the point that this is one potential consequence of not addressing the massive debt that this country now has. 13.7 trillion dollars in debt. The idea is to get this on as many networks as possible. We're airing it first on national cable, including Fox, CNN, CNBC, and others. And we hope that millions of Americans watch this and start to hold our elected officials accountable so that we do not go in this direction. Now, that's the whole point about we can change the future. We have to. And only by gathering together to get more accountability and have everyone address this massive problem, can we really prevent this from happening? Well, we're happy that you debuted it here first with me on this show, because this has been a, a very big issue of mine and ours here. I'm just wondering what the reaction has been at some of the other venues you plan to run it. Has anyone rejected it? No, and it's interesting you mention that, because this is kind of an homage. Uh, it's really based in part on the 1986 they had the deficit trials that W.R. Grayson Company I tried remember. to air and they were rejected by the networks and it was too controversial because there was a younger person holding the older generation accountable and interestingly say and in 1986 the national debt was two trillion dollars didn't that frighten you well if that doesn't frighten us where are we at 13.7 trillion headed by the way in the next 20 years about the time this would occur to where we have 140 percent of the debt in relation to GDP. If it is rejected on another news network or another venue, and I don't know, I'm happy to hear that so far you haven't heard that, Tom. Um, why do you think it would be? Why do you think um, an obvious slap would be it's a slap at the White House, it's a slap at Democrats? You're saying this is a bipartisan slap. Explain. Uh, looking at how the debt was when George W. Bush came into office, uh, it was about $5.8 trillion. It became $10.02 trillion. That's a $4.2 trillion increase, 72.5%. Since President, Ob President Obama took office, about a $3.5 trillion increase so far, uh, including the upcoming fiscal year, it'll be a 46% increase. It's unsustainable, and both parties are at fault. That's the whole point of getting this ad out when people are thinking about spending. You know, Tom, this is, uh, we're watching this as you're talking, and a lot of you have expressed interest in this just since the show started. Um, this ad is on our website. Uh, we don't judge these ads. We let you folks at home watch them, if you like them, if you hate them. Uh, we feel that's your call. That's your right, um, not ours. So you can look at this and weigh in. One thing that's going to come up, Tom, is and I can almost hear the Chinese ambassador now, um, that you're making them look sinister, evil. What do you well, say? It's not, a, it's not about the Chinese. It's about our leadership here in the United States. The Chinese happen to own about 20.6% of our debt or hold 20.6%. Uh, we've extrapolated that under one scenario, they might own more than half in 20 years. Uh, but again, we can stop that from happening. 
If it wasn't the Chinese, it would be someone else, the British, the Japanese. The point is that we are indebted to the rest of the world to the tune of $13.7 trillion to everybody who owns our debt. It is unsustainable, and that's the point of getting this ad out. And we're going to continue to run it, by the way, as long as we can, as long as we get the support to keep it on the air until we get the results that we need to stop this from going over the edge. Tom, well done. And by the way, for those who don't know, Tom, don't know, Citizens Against Government Waste, um, for as long as I've known Tom, as long as I've known this organization, they've been a bipartisan attacker on waste. They haven't liked it. They haven't liked the explosion in this. So they've been going after this, shall I say, long before it was cool. So there it is on our site. You'll see it elsewhere. Tom Schatz, thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Meanwhile, Donald Trump has been warning about this for long before there were commercials on the subject. He joins me right now. Um, Donald, you've been concerned more to the point about the Chinese and the Chinese specifically. What do you mean? Well, it's China, it's other countries also, but China is the big culprit. And I think I know the Chinese probably better than anybody. I do a lot of business with them, and they will tell me, and they'll be very open about it, that they can't believe what they're getting away with. They're very smart, they're very cunning, and frankly, if the United States failed, I think they'd love to see it. I think they'd laugh themselves to sleep. And we, we have to do something. We are not making things in this country anymore. China is rebuilding itself because they're making all of our products and they're selling them back to us in the United States. We're not making things anymore. And if something isn't done about it fast, your previous guest is going to be 100 percent right. Now, we don't make things anymore because a lot of companies feel the labor is cheaper abroad in places like China. And that's why China's benefiting. What do we have to do to correct that? Well, first of all, China has a phony currency. Their currency is so low that it's very hard to compete. When I go out and order products for buildings as I build buildings, I mean, more and more, this is a phenomenon. Ten years ago, it didn't happen. More and more, everything's being made in China. So many different products for buildings, big buildings, whether it's the glass, whether it's windows, whether it's frames. I mean, things you wouldn't even think of, uh, pipes, uh, they're made in China. And I say, can we buy something from the United States, please? I'd really like to buy something from the United States. It's made in China. And China is getting away with murder. Now, it's very hard to compete when you have a phony, really a phony low currency. Their values are so low in terms of their currency value that it's very hard for American companies to compete. And what I think we should do is, unless they change their currency right away, tax Chinese products 25% and pay off their debt. You'll pay it off so fast your head will spin. But we're rebuilding China because what we're making is being made in China. So let me ask you, um, China today, numbers came out that they've upped their buying of U.S. debt. I don't know if there's any timing to that. Why shouldn't they? Why but, shouldn't they? Right, but... but there's the argument that we need the Chinese. You're saying they need us more than we need them? They need us much more than we need them. We are rebuilding China, Neil. And I've been telling you this for quite some time. Yes, you and you know, it's sort of interesting. Since I've been talking to you and some others, but you, of course, by far being the most influential based on your ratings, but since I've been speaking to you and others, a lot of politicians are listening to me. And we are being tougher on China, but we're not being tough enough. And I do business with China, and I do business with the Chinese. And let me tell you, they are smart, they are cunning, and they are doing a number on this country that they can't even believe they're getting away with. I say tax the Chinese products. When they make product – now, we don't have to make toys that in many cases are unsafe for our children with the lead and the paint and everything else. We don't have to make them we can, in China. We can make them in Alabama. We can make them in North Carolina. We can make them in places that we used to make them. It's not like well, that's something a good, that we Donald, have Well, that's a good platform for, for running for president. Well, I get a lot of good polls, I will say that, and I'm not thinking about running for president so much. And I, I will say this, Neil. Every poll that you've seen has been pretty strong. And you know why? Because they're hearing what I say. And now people are starting to pick up that mantra. And that makes me very happy. But they have to do it faster, Neil. Are, you entertaining? It are you entertaining it? 
I, I was thinking about it. I am thinking about it a little bit. It's not something I want to do. But this country, our great country, is in serious trouble. And your previous guest happens to be right. Our country is in serious trouble. This country is going to be a total mess in five years if something isn't done quickly. They don't have the right – we don't have the time to wait. Something has to be done now. We have to make product in our country. Okay. We, have to, we have to put people to work. The Chinese are working, making things that we should be doing. So if you don't run, a lot of talk back and forth about Michael Bloomberg running as an independent candidate, the New York mayor, the billionaire. What do you think of that? Well, I love Michael Bloomberg, and he's been a great mayor, and he's a friend of mine. And if he ran, he'd do a great job. Unless you run. Well, I, I, you know, again, I think Michael would do a great job. <laughs> Never, ever put me in that position. But All right, we, are, we are thinking about a lot of different things. I'm thinking about the country now. The country is in serious trouble. And if something's not done quickly, this is no longer going to be that great country that people have been writing about for 100 years. Good stuff always, uh, Mr. Trump. Thank you very much. The Trump Organization, Apprentice et al., best-selling author Donald Trump. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Neil.